Hey team, today I'm going to walk you through the basics of Agile. To do this, we're going to walk through some key concepts with Jira. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe below for future updates. If you're new to Agile, it's a software methodology that helps break up large amounts of work into smaller pieces. The hope and goal is to make it more manageable, help to plan it better, and to try to be a little bit more flexible when change is coming. While I'm not going to go super in-depth in a lot of the deeper concepts, I am going to walk you through some key basic concepts that'll help you get productive. To do this, we're going to walk through some key things with Jira. Jira is a suite of tools that allow you to become more productive where your project is going to be more planned and tracked using frameworks like Scrum or Kanban. With Jira, we're going to walk through three basic things, stories, epics, and sprints. A story is going to be the smallest piece of work. It's going to typically come in the form of a new ticket or an issue on GitHub. So let's create our first story in Jira. Say we want to add a social media link to one of our blog post pages. We might write something like, as a reader, I want to share a blog post on Twitter. The goal here is that you would write as a something you want to do some sort of action. Next in the description, you want to be a little bit more descriptive about what you want to actually do. So maybe I want a button link on the bottom of my blog post. Maybe I also want to include the URL for someone to share. And maybe I want to also include a hashtag, include hashtag web dev. The description of this is something that you don't want to just kind of choose lately. So maybe I'm a little bit sparse here, but you want to make sure you give as much context as possible for each story. And once you have as much information as possible, you can create your story. Once you have your story created in tools like Jira, you're going to have a lot of options for what you can do with it. So for example, if I wanted to add a comment for something I figured out later, or if somebody wanted to communicate a question to me, they could do so right in the comments. So a story is good if you're just kind of trying to express one piece of work that needs to be done, but what if you want to try to express a whole feature where you're going to have multiple stories? That's where an epic comes in. So if you wanted to create something like authentication for your app, you're going to have your epic, which defines that whole feature set, and then the stories are going to be bucketed underneath that epic. Similar to a story, you're going to have some of the same fields where you have the summary and the description, where you can go as much in depth as you can just to make sure everybody's on the same page when they're looking at this epic. Once you have your epic, though, it's going to be treated a little bit differently than a story. So your story is going to kind of just show up in the backlog as is, but then you have different epics where you can navigate between those different pieces of work. So now that we don't have actual work in our authentication epic yet, let's create a new one. So maybe, for example, well, as a guest, I want to sign in with Google. In the description, we might write, use the Google OAuth to provide sign in. But now that we have an epic, we can go down to our epic link and actually select our authentication epic and then create a story with that. And now that story actually shows up under the authentication epic. Where this becomes more powerful though is when you have multiple stories on the epic. So once you have those stories, you can add points to each, which kind of represents the amount of work or how difficult or the amount of risk that you have for each story that's unknown. So with this authentication epic, we currently have nine points of work that we would want to get done. Now epics only represent the amount of work that needs to get done, not actually when it's going to get done. For that, we're going to use sprints. So in Jira, that's pretty simple where we can just create a sprint. But once we have that sprint, we can start dragging up stories. Now the difference between a sprint and an epic is while they're both kind of buckets of different stories, a sprint represents time, whereas the feature, the epic, only represents the amount of work that needs to be done. So while in in one sprint, we might only be able to get six points done. We might have nine points total of work to do in that epic. And once we start that sprint, we know that we're setting that to be over the course of two weeks. So that's going to be five business days each. Now it shows that we have nine days remaining. So if we know that we can only complete six points of work, we know that between those two weeks, we're only going to be able to get the Google sign in and the authentication endpoint for the front end developers completed where we would have to wait till next sprint to get the Twitter sign in. in. The hope is with these sprints, you're going to be able to kind of estimate with your team and with your customer when you expect some work to get out. So try to keep in mind that Agile, whether you're using the Scrum or Kanban framework, is just that, a framework. Well, if you're just starting out with Agile, it's probably good to just kind of follow along with the framework. Keep in mind that each team's different. So listen to your team and mold it to your own experiences. Each team works a little bit differently and forcing process on that team can cause more harm than good. At the end of the day, your process should be invisible, working for you instead of against you. So if you follow along, we went through the basics of Agile using Jira. Agile is a huge topic, so if you're interested in learning more, I added some links in the description. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.